The story of the Phoenix is perhaps the most iconic story to come out of Chris Claremont's 16-year run on Uncanny X-Men. But importantly, the story of Jean Grey's cosmic encounter with destiny, rise to power and prominence, and tragic downfall is not the entirety of the Phoenix's story. Indeed, Jean Grey isn't even THE Phoenix. There is another. And when we integrate Rachel Summers into the broader Phoenix narrative, we find a deeper and even more compelling narrative unfolding. Rachel Summers is first introduced to readers of UXM just four issues after Jean's death, in the pages of Uncanny X-Men 141 from 1981, the first part of the Days of Future Past storyline. She's identified only as Rachel, a telepathic and telekinetic member of the future X-Men who is in a relationship with a now adult Franklin Richards. Her appearance is brief, yet oddly portentous of what's to come for her in later issues. In just a few panels of presence, Rachel is made to experience the death of all of her remaining loved ones via telepathic link, left to hide out in a ruined world, and it is Rachel herself who delivers the grim speculation that the actions of the time traveler in the past might not right the future at all. They might just create a new timeline. Three years later, Rachel would return to the X universe and to the 616 timeline as a mysterious figure with a traumatic past. This too would establish a theme of Rachel's character moving forward. Someone who is constantly found in a state of recuperation from an unspoken, off-panel story that is only revealed incrementally, one snippet at a time. This combination of unspoken trauma and mystery make Rachel an ideal vehicle for Claremont's go-to characterization strategy. Torture the characters emotionally in order to make them sympathetic to the reader, and to enhance their heroic character by giving them every right to be downright unheroic, if they should so choose. The greatest torture provided to Rachel is the cultivation of her backstory as someone who does not and should not exist in this timeline. She comes to realize that the timeline she's in does not even connect to her, displacing her from the very concept of past and future. She was unable to alter her reality and is forever excised from any continuity. Her character arc then becomes a story of self-definition in the absence of these external forces, giving her a drive toward agency that mirrors that of the original Phoenix, Jean Grey, while at the same time giving her a sense of simmering anger, self-hatred, and isolation, like that of the original Dark Phoenix. Even amongst the found family of the X-Men, Rachel cannot simply move forward in anew, yet she is largely unwilling to address her past, fearing the emotional burden she places on others. Claremont builds a lot of dramatic tension around these parallels, hurtling Rachel toward a grim destiny in which Dark Phoenix might return. We see this quite clearly in UXM Annual No. 9, where Hela, the goddess of the Asgardian underworld, identifies Rachel's parentage and destiny, welcoming a second harvest of souls to come at the hands of the second Dark Phoenix. Not coincidentally, it is in this same issue that Rachel herself declares a form of allegiance to this cycle by taking the name and insignia of Phoenix on for herself. Then, in UXM number 199, titled The Spiral Path in a Grim Bit of Foreshadowing, Rachel confronts her past by visiting Jean Grey's hips and connecting with the essence of her mother, leading ultimately to the full manifestation of the Phoenix's powers in Rachel. She declares that the world was wrong about the Phoenix power, that it is not a malevolent force, and that she will balance the scales and redeem the memory of her mother by using the force to defeat the Beyonder, an all-powerful villain plaguing the 616 as part of Secret Wars 2. That showdown comes with many of the trappings of the original Dark Phoenix saga, such as cosmic scale conflicts defined by moral boundaries, and connections to found family, and even very specific details like the Emkron Crystal and the pensive observations of Uatu, the Watcher. Uatu sees this as a test for the new Phoenix, and where Jean was consumed by the Dark Phoenix power, Rachel ultimately decides to forego the role of Executioner, noting, You stand for death, Beyonder. I, now and forever, for life, as my mom before me. In the end, it is Rachel's connection to humanity and compassion that defeat the Beyonder, causing for him an epiphany on the value of humanity. It's a great victory for both Rachel and Phoenix, but here's where Claremont complicates the portrayal. Despite passing her test in the eyes of both the Watcher and the Reader, Rachel is not magically cured of her trauma and anger. They continue to consume her in the issues that follow, hounding her right to the point of her ultimate destruction, when Wolverine, who may be telepathically influenced by a suicidal Rachel, stabs her to prevent Rachel from executing the murderous villain Selene. The agents of destruction in these issues are somewhat ambiguous, however. Was it the Phoenix Force that corrupted Rachel to the point of execution, or even suicide? Or did it simply empower the deeply traumatized Rachel in counterproductive ways, necessitating her destruction? As with the original Dark Phoenix saga, Claremont creates spaces for reader speculation and conjecture about who is to blame, and how, and for what. 
But when Rachel drags her dying, bleeding out body away from her found family and into the arms of Spiral, it is obviously tragic. Never before in the pages of X-Men has any character been so completely and utterly alone. Rachel's story was meant to pick up from there in a miniseries that never came to fruition. Instead, she re-emerges in Claremont's Excalibur, reborn, because Phoenix, as a confident and assertive hero. It is here that Phoenix is finally redeemed, with Rachel eschewing the corruptions of power and temptations of revenge for a selfless and altruistic purpose. It would get more complicated from there, with Claremont's departure from Marvel and even with his eventual return to torture Rachel even further. But viewed holistically, Rachel's story is one of legacy, taking on the mantle of her inheritance and with it the burden of atonement. If the Phoenix Saga ends with the death of Jean Grey, it remains an epic tale of tragedy and triumph. If we allow it to continue forward with Rachel, however, it can be seen to take on new dimensions and nuances, making an already great story greater through the contribution of a sometimes underappreciated Marvel hero. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Claremont Run project, you can follow us on Twitter at Claremont Run or visit us on the web at www.claremontrun.com.